Welcome to Discoverer, the real-time video that lets you discover where the information is for 1511. So the first issue then is where all the information, where all the information is stored. The next issue is where do I find the notes? After this we need to think about is there any hints given? Does any of the lecturers give hints for the exercise classes or the labs? And they do. Then are there any real-time videos? Are these real-time videos of a higher quality than podcasts? Do they use Camtasia, an internationally renowned recording system? And they do. So first, let's go through the list of introductions to material we're going to look at. First thing to realize is the second half of 1511 is undertaken by a different lecturer. The hint here is that the material is not in the same location. So where is it? Well, it's in Blackboard. Now some of you might ask, but why is it in Blackboard? Why can't we see it all in one place? Now you have to realize the legacy of this issue. The legacy is in computer science only there are already a number of norms. You might have seen already some of the norms. One of the norms is that a number of the lecturers put their information using HTML and put it on the CS server. I'll show you this in a minute. The other norm is Moodle. The final other norm is Blackboard. Now if you're not sure where and why did Blackboard come about? Well, Blackboard came about some years ago when the university said we would like the majority of the course information for each course in Blackboard. So the second half of the lecture material, all the material is actually in Blackboard. So next, what's on Blackboard then? And after that, where do I find Blackboard? And I can't seem to find it. Then we're going to look at the issues and the material that's actually in Blackboard and introduce you to again to the module guide. The module guide is the first material you should look at when you're introducing yourself to a course. This module guide is given to you in the first lecture. It's also, and a copy of it is also, on Blackboard. Then if you're starting this course, maybe the first thing you're going to be interested in is OK, so I'm going to learn machine code. I'm going to learn programming at the lowest level, assembly. How do I do that? What do we use? Well, what you use is a simulator. It's particularly the ARM simulator. And it is Komodo. So I'll show you some videos that relate to how to use Komodo on Blackboard. After this, we look at something that most students aren't aware of which is linked to LISC, which is the multimedia reading learning list that the university has for every single course. So I'll introduce you to that. The next thing is other hints for the exercise classes and are there hints for the labs? And the answer is there is, and I can show you where they are. They are normally for the second half of the lecture and the first on Blackboard. because it's a second half lecturer who produces and provides them all. The next issue then <coughs> is, is there lots more? And there is. Is there, and there are, lots of past exam papers on Blackboard. And finally, we might look at the library. So let's go and start with finding where Blackboard is. So the first issue we're going to look at then is finding the information. The information, it appears, is given to you on the course syllabus page. And it appears there's only one URL hyperlink, which is this one. There isn't and there shouldn't be. There should be two. One to the CS web server of the high HTML version of this lecturer's material and one to the second lecturers. So let's go and have a look when you click this hyperlink. And here you are, here's the material. You think, okay, here it all is, but, but where's the rest of it? 
and it sort of hints but the thing you miss is a big button here this button takes you to blackboard or you can find it other ways you can type in, type in blackboard Manchester University or find blackboard or students blackboard or any keyword combination that gets you to blackboard so when you click this blackboard you will see this list of information but prior to that remember that you might see a selection list so let's go back and show you what might happen so let's go and select this and you'll see you get to this information so let's go and have a look at it then well the first thing we're going to look at is the module guide so if we go and look at the module guide it's a copy of your years this might be out of date by the time you see this but it'll be your years module guide so what's the module guide well it gives you a lot of information about the course and explicit information of where to find things maybe one of the important things that you should realize is it lists the lectures it also lists in a particular order the type of information given in each lecture so I'm going to expand this just to highlight this because a lot of students don't read this so each lecturer is not just compared comp compiled or it doesn't just contain the core lecture it contains lots of other material and it contains lots of other material because other students have asked for it they've asked for it and said things like okay I can see the material in the lecture slides but how do I test that I know that I've understood the material and there's a number of components to do that one is Q3 that will test your understanding and the other is a set of questions at the back so each lecture has a set of short and long questions now you might say but I only want the lecture notes well you might do but when you want to revise they might not be the best thing if you're after a first they are encapsulated the core lectures in these lecture notes they will be found after the learning outcomes now the learning outcomes which are very important to you, what you should learn as keywords and theory in a pedagogical approach when you walk out the door so remember all lectures should give you this at the start of the lecture these core lectures then will start and then you'll move into if there is any self-study information you will be given reference to that if there's any example class information or lab information you'll be given that at the end of the lecture and finally you'll know it's the end because we'll have a mind map or summary so the core lecture is in all your lecture notes so let's stop looking at the module guide now because you can have a look at it yourselves so let's go and have a another look then at our list so what was on our list then well we've seen where blackboard is we've navigated to it and we've had a look at the ne next issue which was a module guide let's go and find Komodo and find out where we can be introduced to Komodo so let's go back to the web and go and find Komodo so if we look down here we will see at the top real-time videos of Komodo simulator and let's go and have a look at these then and just introduce them so here they are now the important videos is there are a number of videos designed for the first time user of Komodo they're designed for you to look at and understand what it is and how you can visualize it so let's have a quick look at some of these
might take a while because it's going to a server. Now, this is a very important iconic Komodo on paper. If you look at commercial simulators of ARM or the Komodo simula simulator, it is broken down and visualized in this exact way. What does that mean? It means that in the top right hand side you will load a program that is viewable and understandable by humans. It will be text and instructions and assembly instructions. In the bottom right you will have a visualization of a linear memory and numeric interpretation of this screen and a disassembled version of it on the far right. These two versions, the text here and here, may not look the same. This one is the one you write and assemble and it will be loaded into the machine. This one is the interpretation of the numeric values stored in memory of those instructions. And on the left here are the registers. Now I suggest you watch this video because it's a very powerful video to explain how Komodo works on paper. So getting back to the other videos, here's another video that you could look at. Let's go and have a look. Now this one actually as you can see is on YouTube. So I've got a YouTube channel. I've had it for a number of years and it explains how the simulator works and again these are both worth watching if you're a new user. So that's the real-time video that shows you and introduces you to Komodo. And then there's some other videos that you could have a look at watching as well. So that's the introduction to Komodo. So let's go back to the other media. So we've looked at real-time videos now the next thing we'll look at, we'll have a quick jump back and see what we're meant to be looking at. So the next thing we're meant to look at is the multimedia list. Now you might not know about this, so let's go and have a look at the multimedia list. So here we are. Here's the multimedia list. Now I've got one and of course probably have one and the previous lecturer of the first half used to have one. So what we'll do, we'll go and look at my multimedia linked to list. Now what this list is, is a list of all the material that's linked to your course. It'll be books, it could be videos, it could be lots of things. Now the interesting thing with this, if you haven't seen it, is it should be, um, if you like, introduced to you at the first stage of the course. So let's go and look at one of these which is your main textbook, the ARM assembly language. Let's go and look at one of these and see what it does. Here it is. So what does it do? It gives you a presentation of what the textbook looks like. Uh, you can find it in the library. There's 24 copies. Remember that there are 24 copies and it gives you places to buy this. Now the interesting thing is how did Amazon get here? Because they've got a massive um, indexing link or binding to the university somehow and you can see the prices. You can also see that you can get it at varying prices for used or other different prices. So you can buy one of these books but remember this isn't the only book and I'll take you back to that issue a bit later. So that's the link to list. It's got lots of information that you should have a look at. Now, let's go back to see what else I should introduce you to. Well, the next thing we need to look at then is the lab information or hints and what they are. So let's go and have a look and see where they are then. So let's find the page that gives you the lab information. So let's go to one of, say, the labs. So in these weeks, it tells you what the labs are. This is lab exercise one. Let's go and have a look at that week then. Here it is. Now in the week, if it's my lectures, I'll give you videos and audios and a copy of the notes. But as I'm not lecturing, this will give you information. I'll go to the broadcast. The broadcast is information that might help you. So let's go and have a look at the broadcast first. 
The broadcast is important information to remind you again if you haven't looked at the Komodo introduction to maybe have a look at it. And it also gives you other information as well. Some of that information is actually in the lab exercise information directory or folder. So let's go and have a look at that. So here it is. Now importantly maybe some of this might be hints. So normally I broadcast hints or other ways of introducing you to the material. But in this case as it's lab one and I've given you a lot of information in the introduction to Komodo in the subdirectory on Komodo I've not given you much because I've already given you a lot of information. So let's look at another lab then. So we'll go back to our initial page and look at another lab. So let's go and look at lab exercise two then. And here we are. Again, you've got the broadcast, which will introduce you to relatively uh, related information to the exercise and then you've got the lab exercise information. Let's go and have a look at that then. So in here you've got quite a lot of information. One of the things I try and do with a number of exercises is I give you hints. So these hints might help you through the lab exercise and you normally have to read them and they try and teach you how to solve problems. The reason this needs to be taught is the only skill that's important in industry is problem solution. And here I take you through some keywords about starting to do some research, maybe working out what the problems are to be solved, and then stepping through each of those issues. So that's what we can see as lab information. Now let's go back and see is there any other lab information for the different types of exercise classes? Because every other week we have exercise classes. So let's go and have a look then. Here we go, we've got a broadcast again and we've got the exercise classes. So as we can see here there's a lot of help here if you get stuck a lot of new information if you're not sure how to do some of these tasks and then again even with the exercise classes hints. So let's go and have a look at the hints. Now here the issues, the computation, the algorithmics, the machine code you have to undertake in each exercise we explain where you might look and the steps you might go through to solve the problems. Now these hints seem to be missed by a number of students but they are on Blackboard you just have to know where to find them. So let's go and look at what we should be looking at next. So after we've seen that actually most labs do have hints most exercise classes do have hints as well. What else? Well there's a lot more and I'll let you scan it. Maybe one of the most important things to look at is past exams. So let's go and look at them then. So if we come back down to our master page find our basic page at the very start. We'll see near the bottom, because it's at the end that you maybe need to think about exam revision, you'll find the past exams folder. So let's click that and see what it gives you. Now here's a lot of information again. Wait a sec, have I got the right one? Nope, not yet. Here we are past exams. Well there's a lot of information here. There's straight past exam papers. There's past exam papers with marking schemes and then there's past exam papers with feedback. So let's go and look at each one and just give you an introduction to each. The first one is past exams. So what are they? Well it goes back a number of years to even before I started lecturing and you can see what the past exams look like. So let's go back quite a few years to one of the first past exams that I've got on this website and here it is. You can see the type of questions they were asked, you can see the marks and you can see it's directly related to your course and you might and should be able to do most of these as well. So let's go and look at another one then but we'll look at a newer one so this is a bit newer. 
So this one's a more recent exam and you'll start seeing again the type of questions you'll get asked. Remember the new exams have been changed into two sections so you must mark them in two answer books. One for the first half lecturer which has section A and B. Section A is the short questions for that lecturer and section B is the long ones. Here they're both integrated and here you can see the type of questions. Now let's jump out of this and go and look at a different one which is past exams and marking scheme. So as you can see there's quite a lot. Let's go back to the very first one on this. You'll see how different they are. This was prior to myself taking over. And this is what they used to look like. Here was the questions and here is the template answer. And there they were. Now let's go and look at a newer one. As you can see these are totally different to the old ones. These have created quite a controversy. One because they're more detailed because I've added more data. Two because they've got extensive marking criteria and these sometimes with luck, though I can't say I've had much luck with this, have set new norms for layouts of marking scripts. So hopefully they're more comprehensive than the previous marking scripts used to be. So let's move on from there and look at the final issue and that is past exams and feedback which is a bit different. So let's go and look at these then. So we've got a few of these. Um, let's go and look at just one. Now the important thing to realize about these is that these not only have general feedback to help you, but specific feedback which hints at what you should add and maybe the skill set and techniques you should think about to get in line with the marking scheme and what the markers expect. So there's a lot of information here. Let's go and have a quick look at another one then. And again you've got the marking scheme, the answers and how we might suggest feedback for you to improve. Let's go and look at one more then. And again you can see lots of feedback. So let's move on to the next issue then. What was the next issue? So the next issue then is what the library has to offer. Well, let's go and have a look then. Can we? Let's delete some of these. Let's go and do type in arm and see what happens in the library search engine. Well, it might not be the appropriate arm we want, but it could be. Is this the hardware? And it looks like it. So there's one arm book. Arm assembly language. So that's one arm book you can look at. Let's see if we can get more explicitly. Maybe put arm and let's go back. See if we can go all the way back. to here and hopefully we've got a book list here and we should be able to find this one. So let's see if we search on this one in the library what happens. Let's delete some of these in a minute. So in a minute we're going to get to the library web page. Here it is. Let's go and put this book in and see what it tells us. 
and here it is. Let's go and have a look at it. And you can see there's quite a lot um, and a number of these in the library. You can see the details of them and it will tell you a bit about the book. So there we are. I think we've nearly finished where's all the information. Let's quickly go and have a double check. We've introduced how to find and where Blackboard is. We've also talked about the module guide. We then talked about the real-time videos for first steps in understanding the ARM simulator and we introduced a Komodo on paper introduction and then we moved to the actual simulator. We then introduced the multimedia list that you might not have known about for extra resources. We also introduced the fact that most exercise classes and lab classes have hints given to you by the second lecturer. And it's got lots more that we could scan. We finished up looking at the past exam papers and we finally looked at what the library has to offer, which is quite a lot. So thank you very much for listening. Hopefully that's given you a good view of what's and where the information is for Komodo and how you can see it.